And so we have the great pleasure today of having Grigory Rosenblum, who will speak about eigenvalue estimates and asymptotic synthetics for weighted pseudo differential operator with singular measures in the typical case. The stage is yours. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, well, uh, this is this is a joint paper with Eugen Chergarotsky, who is present here with uh, a lot of affiliations and so on. And uh, uh, the main part of the talk can be seen in the preprint uh, in, in the archive, uh, which was published some three months ago, but uh, some new results will be published very soon. Well, so the, uh, the problems, the problems we're going to study come uh, from uh, rather uh, recent uh, old times. So the initial problem uh, came uh, something like 70 years ago. It was in 1951 when Mark Crane considered the spectral problem for the singular string. So it's one dimensional problem. Uh, it's written here and uh, P uh, is a measure, is a Borel measure. And Crane found out uh, the, that the eigenvalue asymptotics, n is the counting function, the eigenvalue asymptotics of this problem uh, has uh, rather strange properties. The, the leading term, term of the asymptotics is determined only by the absolutely continuous part of the measure p. And the singular part doesn't contribute. And proof by a crane was terrible, so something like 20 pages, and it was not published then, it was published uh, in the book by a crane and Goldberg some 15 years later. Uh, in the 70s, it was a revolution you know, by Birman and Slamiak in the spectral symptotics uh, stuff, and uh, the results of this kind in uh, much more general setting appeared uh, there. And they found out that this property that the singular measures, they do not, that the singular part of the measure do not contribute, uh, it has rather general nature. So they found out that if one considers such a problem, when A is an elliptic operator of order greater than the dimension of the space, is called the high order case. The same effect, the uh, eigenvalue asymptotics is determined by the absolutely continuous part of the measure P and singular measure doesn't contribute. In the opposite, if one considers the low order case, it was not so much work about this, but it is known that uh, if singular measure lives on a submanifold, for example, it may be a boundary, so it's a Stekhlov type problem. Then it is the singular measure that makes the leading contribution to the eigenvalue counting function. Uh, and so uh, it is stronger than the absolutely continuous part. So natural ways to study the critical case when the dimension uh, of the space equals the order of the operator. And it turned out the hardest one in the even in dimension in n equal two. And uh, here there are several people present who worked uh, on this critical case and uh, they know that it is in fact the hardest one, uh, uh, even in the two dimensional case. And even no final results are, uh, so the only know the results known before was that when the singular part lives in the boundary, then its contribution to the eigenvalue counting is of the same order. Results of this kind were obtained some 25 years ago by Kozhevnikov. Well, so our task was to understand the spectral structure of this kind of problems in the critical case, when the singular part of the measures pro is present and how does this singular part contribute to the uh, eigenvalue distribution. So we consider this problem, the spectral problem, and it's uh, 
a little bit unusual why the spectral parameter lives uh, on the left hand side uh, near the operator, uh, near the differential operator. The reason is that, uh, as usual in uh, our school, uh, the problem is reduced to the spectral problem for a compact operator here to the written. And for the compact operator, the uh, spectral parameter lives on the usual uh, place. Uh, can I ask you a little question? Yeah. Question? Can you uh, be specific? What does PU mean? Well, it's, uh, it will be explained. There will be more examples of this P. Uh, well, so what, uh, what kind of examples? So what, what this uh, measure P uh, can, uh, uh, can mean for spectral problems? So examples. So dimension two, the, uh, uh, the order of the operator is equal to, so half the order is one, and the two-dimensional uh, domain, and let the, the, uh, let the measure P is some absolutely continuous part plus some singular part which lives on the line. So here, delta one. Okay, okay, so you're multiplying basically. Yes, yes, it's multiply, multiplication. Uh, the uh, the meaning of this operator also will be explained. So what uh, does this what does this mean? So uh, if one understands the equation in the sense of distributions, then the uh, spectral problem problem will be the following: outside the critical domain, we have that. So the spectral problem of this kind means that it is the usual spectral problem uh, in uh, outside the uh, line y equals zero. And uh, on uh, this line, we have uh, the so-called transmission problems of the jump, the uh, spectral parameter times the jump of derivative equals another weight function times the value of function here. So we have spectral parameter both in the equation and in the jump uh, transmission condition. Of course, uh, this is uh, this can be more general. So suppose that we again have a two-dimensional case, have a Lipschitz curve in the domain, and again, uh, if the measure is an absolutely continuous part plus a singular part living on a submanifold, then for example, with directly boundary conditions, then uh, the uh, spectral problem is the usual spectral problem outside the line and the transmission problem here. So we have lambda both here and there. Well, uh, the Steklov problem, we return to this, the Steklov problem when sigma uh, is a boundary of omega, uh, it is covered only for a smooth boundary, and we will discuss this later. Well, can, can, uh, I, ask, um, can I ask in the case of um, you, if in the example, if y is equal to zero, then uh, v, v zero does not contribute? Yes, of course. In example one, somehow. Yes, That's if it, if, x and y. if in this example, v zero equals zero, then we have uh, uh, Laplacian equals zero outside, and the transmission problem on the uh, line. Yes, well, I mean, not V0. V0 is non zero, but uh, when you say when y is equal to zero, you write lambda. Yes, I mean, y, yeah. y equals zero. It's the line. It's the line. So, and, and then later you say lambda y zero is equal to V1 of x. So here V0 disappears. Well, yes, uh, yes, V zero, it, it's not felt on this, in this transmission condition, uh, the absolutely continuous part is not felt. So here it's only V one, it's V zero outside the line and V one on the line. That's how you interpret multiplication because in general you can- Which multiplication? But delta y, so it's not multiplication. It is uh, it's a way to write transmission condition. Or when you write p to be delta y, but then you multiply by u, and in general you cannot multiply. No, 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 no. It's not. It's multiple. So it's the 
Not multiplication. So Here, sorry. it's the jump, the jump uh, of the derivative at the point, at this point. The, the jump of y derivative uh, at the line where y equals zero. So it's not we differentiate uh, here at zero, but we first take the jump at this point. So that's, that's interpretation of delta y. Yes. Okay. So it's transmission condition. The jump of derivative equals uh, some uh, spectral parameter. Well, uh, so in a higher dimension, uh, there are some interesting uh, examples. So we have dimension of the space equal four, the order of the parity equals twice two equals four. And for example, if the dimension of the uh, dimension of the surface where the singular part lives equals two. So we represent a, our the variable x is uh, x and y both are two dimensional. And if the measure p is again an absolutely continuous part plus a singular part living on the surface uh, y equals zero, then again, we have uh, outside this line, we have the usual spectral problem. And on, on this plane, we have this kind of spectral problem since uh, since because of the derivative, there is a singularity of the solution at this surface. Uh, so, uh, so here it is um, lambda times, and here instead of jump of the derivative, there stands uh, the uh, mean value of the normal derivative uh, on the circle uh, around y equals zero. Well, and uh, for example, if we take the dimension of the uh, critical, the dimension of the support of the singular part equals three. So we again uh, have for the jump condition here is the integration of the sphere of the normal derivative. This is just an illustration. Uh, so, uh, but generally we, uh, general problem, so we have a weighted pseudo differential operator uh, with weight being measured containing both absolutely continuous singular components. And uh, the spectral problem, they contain spectral parameter both in the equation and the transmission or jump condition. So, what is the spectrum and which component of the measure makes stronger contribution? And the main result is the following, that under rather general condition, in this critical case, the contributions of singular paths living on Lipschitz surfaces, surfaces of different dimensions make to the spectrum, uh, to the spectrum, the uh, contributions of the same order. So the order uh, of uh, the eigenvalue asymptotics, it doesn't depend on the dimension of the support of the singular part. It doesn't depend on the measure of the dimension of the enveloping space. And these contributions uh, coming from uh, different parts of the measure, they sum up in the spectral, spectral distribution. Well, uh, in fact, uh, there was a lot of work in the critical, in the critical case for differential operators and uh, it was mostly related with uh, spectral estimates of negative spectrum of such problem here is written, depending on the parameter T, the, the birman schwinger principle, the Birman, Slamyak, Laptev, Netrusov, uh, and they stressed uh, on the behavior of this V, uh, it was a function, not a measure, uh, at infinity. The hardest case is to find uh, nice, to find sharp conditions uh, for finding uh, estimates of the order of eigenvalues here, uh, local conditions of on V. And it was found, so uh, this uh, was the variational method. And so for such problem, for such problem, which again, V is a function, not a measure. 
the, uh, it was found that the asymptotics of eigen, the uh, counting function of eigenvalues, here it is written explicitly, it is estimated by lambda to the power minus one, is the usually so to say while order, the dimension divided by uh, the order of, of, of the operator. But here uh, it stands the Orlich norm, the so-called average norm, uh, Orlich norm of the potential. So the, the function V needed to be just a little bit better than L1. So when we have a subcritical case, when the order of operator is smaller than the dimension of the space, then uh, the conditions for uh, the, to have the vile order of the asymptotics are exactly that V must belong to uh, uh, LP of proper, uh, proper order of P. But in this critical case, it must be a little bit better than in L1. In the asymptotics, so this is the asymptotics of eigenvalues, which is determined by a positive or negative part of V. It is V L1, but the conditions for this are a little bit, just a little bit stronger. They belong to the orange space and uh, it is, you see, the, it must be that this function psi of v must be uh, integral of it must be finite. And you see this function psi is a little bit better by logarithm order is better than uh, simply L1. Well, uh, some uh, important uh, contribution was made by Shagarovsky and Kuruhanda uh, who adopted uh, Salamiak's approach to singular measures in the two-dimensional case. Uh, this is the uh, problem. So the measure P is uh, has the some weight function V times mu, which is Radon measure, which is so-called alphas, alpha regular. So this is the condition uh, that the measure of uh, balls of radius R is estimated from above and from below by some R to the power alpha. Essentially, this exclude point masses. Uh, and they obtained this estimate that for the for uh, measures V, uh, V times mu, where mu is measure satisfying alpha's uh, property, uh, then again, one has an eigenvalue estimates of this vile order and with the uh, coefficient being again orange space, but with respect to this measure mu. And they found, uh, they found out that the order and form of eigenvalue estimate, they do not depend on the dimension of the support of the measure, which was quite unusual compared with critical and uh, subcritical, uh, supercritical and subcritical case. And uh, the final ingredient in our work was uh, a starting point was uh, some work that made by Grigory Tashian and myself, and it started in 96 by a paper by Amosov and Granovich, who found asymptotics of eigenvalues of potential type integral operators on surfaces of finite smoothness. And uh, they, well, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of things here. So uh, one has a, a Lipschitz surface. Uh, in uh, the Euclidean space, smooth outside a closed set of measure zero. And uh, we have kernel, which uh, is positively homogeneous of some degree, bigger than n minus one. So it's surface of k dimension one. Then for the integral operator k in this, uh, with this kernel, uh, there is the eigenvalue asymptotics, this form with explicitly written, uh, uh, so this is the order of asymptotics. Uh, the uh, constant was explicitly written, dependent on the kernel. Uh, and uh, the uh, conditions was the Lipschitz surface, smooth outside the closed set of measure zero. 
sometimes later, 10 years later, uh, inspired by the question by Agranovich, uh, Grigory Tishan and myself, we relaxed the condition of the Anmos uh, Agranovich theorem, and we found the, for such operators, the eigenvalues and totems for any Lipschitz surface. So the, for uh, integral operators of uh, potential type, uh, the eigenvalue asymptotics hold, holds for any Lipschitz surface. Some 10 years later, we again returned to this problem and proved a similar result for Lipschitz surfaces of an arbitrary co-dimension. So if surface has arbitrary dimension d smaller than n and the kernel has homogeneity of order zero, then the, the eigenvalues of such integral operator have such order. And what we didn't notice that if the uh, homogeneity order of the kernel is zero, or it is a logarithm, so q equals zero, then this lambda equals uh, this uh, order equals one and doesn't depend on anything. So only only this year uh, we noticed this thing, and it was. Uh, the, uh, another crucial contribution. So it was, uh, it was some prerequisite, and now our setting and results. So we generalize the setting which we had before. So it's the following: we have, we take uh, in the n-dimensional space, we have a pseudo-differential operator of order uh, minus l. So it's minus the, it's minus the half a half of the dimension of the space with some principal symbol uh, and uh, we have some subset x compact a mu a measure mu supported on x uh, singular measure we can see that the moment singular measure uh, this measure mu is alpha regular and we have measure which is some weight function times this mu which belongs to uh, this orange space as before. So it's just a little bit better than uh, view one. And we consider the operator, a compact operator of this form. So it's A times multiplication by a measure times the adjoint to A. A is uh, an operator uh, of negative order, you see minus L. So how to understand how does this operator act? It can be written so uh, under the conditions which say this operator T, uh, the compact operator can be uh, represented, factorized as A maps is to the sobering space of order L, then P is measure, it maps uh, HL0 uh, to the Sober space of negative order, and then uh, the joint operator, which again is a pseudo differential operator of order minus uh, of negative order, it uh, maps it again to L infinity. Uh, another understanding which we use is that the operator T is defined by the quadratic form, is written which quadratic form in L2. Well, so the leading case, which I have already de discussed, is when A, the operator A, is the Laplacian, one plus Laplacian, to avoid uh, some non-essential uh, complications, one uh, plus Laplacian to the power of minus n divided by four, and our spectral problem is the one which we uh, discussed. So the results. The first result is about uh, eigenvalue estimates. Is the estimate here is written as the so called to say asymptotical estimates, the uh, lim sub, so the, the number of positive or negative eigenvalues of the separator t as lambda goes to infinity is estimated by for some constant depending on mu, another constant uh, dependent on a. And then there stands the uh, norm of positive or negative part of the uh, of the weight v again in this uh, in this Orlich space. Uh, 
You see, it's typical, not only in spectral problems, but uh, in uh, uh, potential theory and in embedding theorems and in um, partial differential equations, in the case when the order of the equation equals the dimension of the space, uh, some kind of ordered spaces arise. So there is a proof. I don't think I have time to discuss the proof. Uh, it's uh, use is rather technical, but there is one ingredient in the proof which uh, somehow justifies uh, the stock to be present on on this geometrical spectral geometry seminar because there is one important geometry lemma. <coughs> the geometry lemma is the following. Uh, we needed it and it turned out that it's possible to prove. Suppose that mu is a measure, Baron measure, without point masses. Then there exists a cube, so measure in the Euclidean space. There is a cube that for any cube which is parallel to this one, the measure of the boundary of the cube is zero. Uh, this is a, uh, well, it can be considered a, as a measure theory or geometrical measure theory or geometry because the proof is quite geometrical. Uh, but this was a most important ingredient in the proof of these estimates. Well, now the eigenvalue asymptotics, which was obtained. Here I will be able to say a little bit, uh, to say a little bit about uh, how it is proved. So the basic case, let sigma be a compact D-dimensional surface in the Euclidean space. Uh, so it can be of any co-dimension. So in particular, when D equals N, it's just a domain in the Euclidean space, when D is smaller than N, we have a Lipschitz surface. Let mu be a D-dimensional Hausdorff measure on sigma. Uh, so in local coordinates, in local coordinates, uh, so we pull, take local coordinates, X and Y bolt phase, uh, and the surface is given by the equation Y is phi of X, and uh, Hausdorff measure uh, has local representation, which is given here in, in the terms of the vector function phi. Then the num the for the operator, which was discussed previously for this compact operator, the eigenvalue counting function for positive and negative eigenvalues has this form again, the same order, lambda to the power minus one, then some coefficient, some coefficient, and uh, the, which depends on that dimension. And finally, it is a coefficient which depends on the symbol of the operator and which depends on the weight function. There is a formula for this, uh, which uh, has, uh, we, we gave to this formula rather uh, invariant, invariant sense. It is, uh, uh, some integral of the principal symbol of the operator A. In the case when, uh, in the case when the operator is the Laplacian, uh, all of this, all of this symbol become trivial and simply the uh, coefficient in the asymptotics is the integral over the surface sigma of the positive or negative part of V. Well, the proof, uh, just main steps of the proof. So first, using estimates, we pass to smooth uh, V. Then by localization, we are able to pass to V of constant sign. Then we extend V to a negative function in the whole, non-negative function, smooth non-negative function in the whole space. And then we represent our operator, uh, factorize it as L star L, where L is some compact operator acting from the domain to the surface. And then uh, the trick consists that the non-zero eigenvalues of this uh, product equal non-zero eigenvalues of that product. 
taken in different order. And the operator which stands here is, in fact, turns out to be the integral operator with some kernel which leading singularity of the kernel of order zero or logarithmical or both. And there, the theorem by uh, this old theorem by Tashian and myself about the eigenvalue asymptotics of such operators on Lipschitz surfaces, it works. Oh, well, uh, in particular, it solves uh, so some fantasies. It will be seen why these fantasies. So uh, if we take the Lipschitz surface of dimension D equals N minus one, so it's the usual, uh, it's the usual transmission problem. So the jump of the uh, normal derivative of the Laplacian of the function of uh, order zero equals uh, lambda, lambda times this jump equals this weight uh, times uh, the weight times the value of the function itself. And we have this, uh, this asymptotics, which now is quite essential. For n equal to, so in dimension two, so when the, uh, the surface is of dimension one, it's very close to the famous challenging question on the eigenvalue asymptotics for the Steklov problem for a domain of ellipses boundary. I know that here there are some people who uh, spend a lot of time in at least popularizing, but probably also in trying to solve this problem because it's an old, it's an old and um, seems to be, uh, see, seeming to be a uh, hopeless problem to find the eigenvalue asymptotics for the Stiklov or Dirichlet to Neumann operator of, in a domain with Lipschitz boundary. In our case, the condition of the domain being inside omega is critical. It reduces to the operator or of uh, the potential type operator on the uh, Lipschitz surface. However, if it is a boundary, well, it's close, close to the solution, but unfortunately. So let us again imagine equal to, we demo, uh, denote by S the single layer potential operator, D by as a double layer potential operator. And the Stiklov problem is equivalent to such a uh, problem. So it's single layer, then one minus double layer, joined to the power minus one. So such an operator. Suppose that there is no D at this moment. Then we are in position, uh, so we have single layer operator, and there uh, our Tishian and myself uh, result of uh, 15 uh, years ago works because the single layer operator exactly fits in our, in our picture, but we have this double layer operator. Suppose for a moment that we know that it is D is compact operator. Then again, the problem is solved because uh, compact operator it, times S gives a weaker contribution to the spectral asymptotics. Uh, but we know that for ellipsoid surface, the double layer operator is not generally compact. It's not compact, so, but it would be sufficient. And that's where Tishian and myself, we spent the last uh, probably 10 years trying to solve it. But uh, so it would be sufficient to prove not that a D star is compact, but the eigenvalues, the singular values of this composition of the uh, double layer operator times single layer operator, the eigenvalues of this operator decay a little bit faster than the eigenvalues of the single layer operator. Well, but it's still unreachable. The best condition we know is not published. Uh, because we want uh, to get some more conclusive result. Condition the following: suppose that the uh, suppose that the line, the line sigma, belongs to V M O one. This means that the uh, the 
tangent vector, the tangent vector, it belongs to VMO, vanishing mean oscillation, outside a closed set of measure zero. So it's uh, a little bit, uh, just a little bit better than uh, than Lipschitz. It can be, uh, it can have any number uh, of corner points and all this stuff, but still it's not Lipschitz. So uh, if there is someone who is interested to attack this problem along our lines or probably along other lines, uh, you can contact me and we can discuss. But this is by uh, as far as we know the best uh, present result concerning the eigenvalue, uh, concerning the eigenvalue asymptotics for the uh, Steklov problem on the Lipschitz domain. So it's not in dimension two, it uh, the same kind of uh, result, so to say, like a, a complication, the same kind of result is for the uh, Dirichlet to Neumann uh, operator in any dimension. So a little bit short of, a little bit short of uh, Lipschitz. Well, now we, uh, we return to our, to our problem. There may be several, there may be several surfaces. Well, I formulated the, the result about estimates and the asymptotics. There may be several surfaces of different dimension and contribution to eigenvalue asymptotics, they add up. So uh, uh, it's not an automatical thing because we know that if we have two operators with eigenvalue asymptotics of the same order, this generally doesn't mean that the sum of this operator has uh, has the same uh, has uh, the same asymptotics and the same order. So as eigenvalue asymptotics eigenvalue asymptotic formulas of the same order, they do not, they are not additive with respect to addition of operators. But in this case, in this case, we have, uh, when we have several surfaces, first of one and the same dimension, and then of different dimensions, uh, then we are able to prove that still uh, still, for this case, the uh, eigenvalue asymptotic formulas, they add up. So the plus and, the, and minus, uh, the positive and negative uh, eigenvalue formulas, uh, asymptotics are given by the same kind of formula when the measure is the, is uh, the mm, sum of measures of the different uh, of, uh, of different dimension. And finally, uh, uh, the most recent, uh, the most recent result, it concerns, uh, it concerns the eigenvalue behavior uh, in the case of when uh, the support of the, uh, the support of the singular measure uh, is rather complicated, it's not a surface. In, a, uh, in geometrical measure theory, such sets which, uh, which work as, which work as um, the support of measure, they are called uniformly rectifiable sets. Uh, I skip a for a moment the explanation, but the uh, uniformly rectifiable set can be, uh, can be uh, described in the terms of uh, uh, upper and lower densities. So uh, uh, HD is the d-dimensional Hausdorff measure, and we take any point X, take a ball at the point X of radius R, and take uh, the uh, uh, intersection with our set X, and look the behavior of this measure times the uh, radius r to the power of minus d. And lim sup and lim inf, they are called positive and negative densities of the set. And it turns out that in the terms of these densities, 
one can establish that the set has a very special structure. Now we can uh, look uh, three lines uh, up. So uh, if this uh, density satisfies some conditions, not very easy, then up to a set of Hausdorff D measure zero, the set X is the union of countably many Lipschitz surfaces of, dim uh, of uh, dimension D, countably many. And our estimates enable us to, to sum the formulas for eigenvalue asymptotics over countably many, countably many uh, sur Lipschitz surfaces. And uh, the result, uh, I uh, write it for the case when the operator is uh, Laplacian, uh, is the following that Suppose that X is a compact D-dimensional uniformly rectifiable set. There, uh, and it is D alpha, alpha regular. Uh, and suppose that V belongs uh, with respect to this measure mu, mu is the Hausdorff measure uh, on the set, uh, belongs again to this Orlich class. Then, for this uh, eigenvalue problem, there is the same eigenvalue asymptotics. So, uh, and this result extends to unions of rectifiable set of different dimensions. So it turns out that uh, as it uh, concerns uh, different combinations of even infinite combinations uh, of uh, the uh, surfaces uh, of Lipschitz surfaces, and it's important that it's Lipschitz. Uh, Lipschitz surfaces, uh, uh, even uh, if uh, we do not put any conditions on how these surfaces are placed with respect to each other. Uh, so we are able to prove the eigenvalue asymptotics. Now the final <coughs> The final uh, slide concerns the upper eigenvalue estimates. All, all uh, eigenvalue estimates, they, uh, I was talking about, they concerns uh, 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 yes, uh, concerns upper eigenvalue estimates. So the eigenvalues uh, counting function are no greater than something. The question, the question is, uh, in the cases, uh, and there are a lot of such cases when uh, the uh, set is fractal, the measure is fractal one. Uh, so, are our estimates order sharp? And the answer is yes. So the lower estimate is the following, suppose that mu is a finite parallel measure without point masses, it's again important, and V is a, a, a non-negative and somewhere positive, then there is a, an uh, upper, a lower estimate for the eigenvalue counting function of the same order. So this order is sharp. Well, Thank you very much. So uh, the a part, so you see it's uh, November uh, of last year, uh, considerable part of the results with detailed proof can be seen in this preprint. And another paper is almost finished, but I uh, didn't manage to finish it in so a way that it uh, can be proved, uh, uh, placed at the, uh, archive, but it will be done in a few days. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for um, this talk. Do we have uh, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, this is uh, Josef Oterovic speaking. So thank you very much, Grisha, for a very interesting talk. Um, I have a question about uh, this uh, uh, discussion that you had about the Lipschitz uh, 
uh, asymptotics for Steklov and the single air potential. Could you please go back to that slide? You mean uh, yeah. for the fa fantasies? I think that was the title of the of the slide. Yeah. Yes, I understand that this might be of most interest of most interest to uh, the people at the uh, spectral geometry seminar. Right. Yes. So, so, so one question is just to understand. Uh, so, if you do, if you take the single layer potential, yes, then uh, you have the uh, asymptotics for Lipschitz uh, domains in any dimension or only in dimension. In any two? dimension, the result holds in any dimension. So, for for single layer, you have a uh, uh, lower in any dimension. Yeah, that's correct. I see. Very interesting. And uh, the result. The paper, uh, uh, the paper is accessible. It was published in 2006 in Russian Journal of Mathematical Physics. But okay. if you are interested, just uh, write to me, and I can send you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I will. I will do that. And uh, uh, the, uh, the the last result when you uh, uh, mentioned the Steklov case with this VMO condition, is it also in any dimension or it's in two dimensions? Yes, it's many dimension. It's in many dimension, mm -hmm. but it's not published. Uh, I'm afraid it's even not written because we thought that uh, this uh, still looks a little bit ugly uh, to be mm -hmm. published. I see. No, but yeah, that's certainly very, very interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Yosef. Do we have um, other questions for, for uh, Grigory? Um, I, I have a question. It's really a baby question. And it probably just illustrates that I didn't understand much of the talk. Can you handle just uh, a delta function potential along a submanifold? Defined as a quadratic form. Yes, that's correct. It's a, a, a long each, a long each of submanifolds of any dimension. It's something. It's something like delta potential, delta function living on this uh, manifold, but multiplied by some weight, a function which uh, is defined on this manifold. That's, that's it's weighted, fine. weighted okay. delta function. So my so the, thank you and my question is uh, what you know about the eigenfunctions of that problem, how they I know behave. nothing. I like know for, nothing. For, for example, how do they behave on the submanifold? It's an interesting question. I understand that it's an interesting question, but uh, you know, all my long life, I uh, almost never uh, dealt with the eigenfunction. My my life is devoted to eigenvalues. Because my, the reason I ask is that when you have a, a smooth potential and you have an eigenvalue, so when you put the uh, eigenvalue on the left side, you know, it's like you change the usual I energy eigenvalue to one, let's say. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a smooth potential, the behavior of the eigenfunction is very different in the allowed region and the forbidden region. The allowed region is where the potential is less than the energy and the forbidden region where it's greater. But here, it seems like the submanifold becomes the forbidden region and everything else becomes the allowed region. Uh, I, I would not uh, say anything about this. Uh, I know that I know uh, that there is a recent paper by Golkovsky where, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's recent for Golkovsky, but uh, the topic was uh, being discussed for some time about considering the uh, behavior of eigenfunctions of the Steklov problem outside the right. boundary. Yeah. So I how, know, I know, how the, I know they... the paper. I know mm -hmm. the paper. Yes, of course. And uh, actually, uh, I, I have think some... it was it was reported in this seminar some half a That's year correct. ago. Um, I have I have something to say to you, but uh, maybe we can do it after the conference. Okay. After, the, after your talk. Nice. Uh, thanks, uh, Steve, for those questions. I, I have a, a question myself about this um, VMO condition. Uh, in, in the way it, it, it 
arises? Is it uh, is there a very natural or transparent way that this VMO condition appears, or or it's more of a, a... no? It's I found uh, the necessary mathematics in order to include these VMO conditions in uh, some uh, papers uh, uh, by Mitrea and Taylor. Uh, the paper itself is something like 150 pages mm -hmm. long. So, uh, so I took only the results, but uh, I, try, I tried to master the technique, but it was terrible, I uh, failed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very, very deep result in uh, this harmonic analysis related to this kind of uh, uh, double layer potentials. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is there any other question for, for the speaker? Well, if not, let's... Uh... Uh, I'll, I forgot to look in chat just in case. Yes, no, it's all right. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much for the talk this week. Um, thank you. We will reconvene. Uh, we will reconvene next week at uh, the same time for a talk by Graham Cox about um, nodal deficiency via equipartitions and Dirichlet to Neumann maps. So thank you everybody for being here again this week, and see you next week. Mm -hmm. Thank you.